Blog Talk Radio. Your journey begins right now. From the West Coast of British Columbia to you listening around the world and blasting out into the universe, welcome to tonight's edition of Spaced Out Radio. Call us at 1 607 203 5344. Tweet us at Spaced Out Radio. Find Dave on Facebook at Spaced Out Radio. Or Skype us at Spaced Out Radio. Now, here's your host, Dave Scott. Good evening and welcome to Spaced Out Radio tonight. I am your host, Dave Scott, and thank you so much for tuning in to SpacedOutRadio.com as we come in from the frozen Canadian tundra, battle our way past the wild animals, sidestep Bigfoot, and enter Uncle Jimbo's cabin, stoke the fire, heat this place up, and now broadcast you live on this Wednesday night, early Thursday morning if you're on the East Coast. Here at SOR, we do this thing seven days a week. We want to be your official one-stop shop when it comes to the extraterrestrial, ufological, spiritual, supernatural, and so much more. Hey, if you're a social media junkie like I am, give us a follow on Twitter, at Spaced Out Radio. You can give our Facebook page a like, Spaced Out Radio Show, and you can also ask to join our private Spaced Out Radio group, as well as our other group, Podcast Central. On Instagram, I can be followed at Dave Scott, S-O-R. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Spaced Out Radio Show, and of course our website is spacedoutradio.com. At this time, as we do every night, I want to say hello and welcome to everyone participating in the Space Out Radio chat room, as well as Paranormal Into the Night and Paranormal Forum. Your questions are required in this because we love your questions. You guys are so smart. Thank you so much for sticking with us every night. Hey, if you head to our website, spaceoutradio.com, you can check out Cat's Corner. Psychic Catherine Fallman will answer what one lucky listener's submitted question per week. Tonight's show is brought to you by purpleplates.com. Help seal your body, mind, and soul. Drop into their site and heal yourself today. Rivulet Reiki and Readings, providing healings in person or at a distance. Spaced Out Radio listeners receive a 10% discount on pricing. 80,000 people a month read the new Agora newspaper. Find out what's happening on the other side of politics. Health, supernatural, paranormal, and so much more. And if you have an iPhone, download the Spirit Story Box. It only costs a buck. Spirit Story Box, the official ghost hunting app of Spaced Out Radio. We often wonder, for those who have had experience with extraterrestrials, how they are able to find us seemingly anywhere and everywhere we are. Sure, it's easy to say that implantation of a microchip-style tracker is easy to do. We've seen and heard these theories for a long time. Heck, I'm pretty sure I'm implanted myself, or it was one hell of a dream when I got woken up on the table with three little gray dudes working on me. But what if it's not a chip? but instead a telepathic connection to your brain. What if we are able to communicate with ETs anytime we want, but we just don't know it? Or it's so embedded in the back of our memories that we haven't figured out a way to truly access the communication we have. C.J. Friesman is our guest tonight on Space Out Radio. He's an ET contactee and communicator with some extraordinary information with those from far off worlds, namely Orion. His website is glhfgg.com. On his website, you can read articles and see what he's been told through his many contact experiences, from communications to groups like the Greys and Anunnaki. What is, man's, what is mankind's role in all of this? Are we just experiments? Or is there something more spiritual and intellectual going on that we should be striving for answers for? C.J. Friesman, welcome to Spaced Out Radio tonight. How are you? Oh, doing well, doing well. How's that cold of yours doing? You know what? Thanks for asking. You know what? It's a little bit rough, but I, I swear I'm actually feeling a lot better than what I'm sounding right now. Okay. But, but the, show mu- the show must go on, and that's why we're here. We got too many people listening into this show on a nightly basis to be worried about a little bit of a cold. So that's why we're here and not taking any nights off. So, you know what? We're troopers here. We got to keep it going. There you go. You have an amazing story, and we're going to get into that throughout the night in regards to your communication with extraterrestrials, in regards to what is happening in far-off places. I want to get into that because this is probably going to be a real strange and eye-opening night for a lot of people where they're going to actually question 
what the hell we're actually talking about on this show and is this real? So for people, CJ, who don't know, this is your first ever interview coming public on this. Why did you decide Correct. why did you decide at this time that it was time for you to bring your experiences out into the light? For a while this stuff really couldn't get out. There's um a lot of different groups that were involved in this, like different E. T. groups and then of the different species there are multiple groups. So it's it's mostly that the situation has it's getting resolved. We're we're kinda of past the hump here. So at at this point it's it's okay to talk about. Take me through who you are though. Are you just an ordinary guy who's had some extraordinary experiences much like me? Or are you someone who feels that maybe you're not really from here? Uh, well, soul wise, you know, none of us are really from Earth specifically. You know, we've all we've all been around for a very long time. So, I mean, kind of a fun thing to consider is that everyone listening has been a different species at some point. You know, human humans just one of the species, kind of a lower tier species. So we've we've all been, you know, a lot of the species in the past. And then most most of our existence we've, you know, pretty much been in the spiritual domain, which which is where most of life is at. Mm-hmm. Um, for myself growing up, you know, Julian De Nova and Carl Sagan's Cosmos and stuff like that. Loved Star Wars, so you know, kind of a lot of a lot of my interests, pretty much my whole life, were were pretty much pointed towards space. CJ, what was your first experience, and what do you recollect from when you started figuring out what was going on with you? Okay, so it started at the beginning of 2010. I saw um, a video on YouTube of a UFO, and I'm like, wow, that. That's pretty convincing. Maybe maybe something's going on here. So I spent about nine months, you know, hours and hours a day, you know, watching videos and documentaries and all that stuff, listening to interviews with, you know, not so much contactees, but, like, people from the military that were saying stuff. So I was, you know, trying to figure out, well, could this be real? And then, you know, like, the iconic image of a UFO you know, the, the flying disc, you know. I'm like, well, what, is that real or not? And then I, I happened to see a video on YouTube that started talking about, you know, the propulsion system. And I started looking at it and go, holy cow, that really might be it. Maybe this is real. So then after about nine months of research, I started writing a paper. So I started off, you know, Big Bang and worked through, you know, galaxy formation, star formation, solar system formation. Um, went through that, and then I got to the Drake equation and talked about the Drake equation a little bit. So I'm not I'm not convinced, but I'm, I'm writing towards it, you know, like trying to get my thoughts together. And then, you know, I started thinking about, okay, while we're seeing them in the skies, what, what could that possibly be about? And it occurred to me that, you know, the best way for them to, like, make contact with us would be to start slow, start, like, a sociological process of kind of alerting us to their presence. And I called that the disclosure process. So I got through that, and then later on in the paper, I said, I think my, I think my left brain believes from a statistical thing, but my right brain needs the experience of the galactic big hello. And then uh, I finished the paper up, and about October, middle of October, uh, put the paper online and then went to work in my car. And 45 minutes later, after I put it on the Internet, two UFOs appeared in front of me. And I wow. could not believe it. Could not believe it. You know, I mean, and like I saw them appear, you know, and then they, they slowly, at the, both of them at the same time, slowly faded out. And I said, no way. They, they saw my paper and they responded. And, uh, well, you know, for the next 45 minutes, all I did was celebrate. I was jumping up and down. Doc, I thought of uh, Jody Foster's character from the movie Contact. And, yes. You know, I documented the situation, trying to be scientific about it. Uh, it you know, and tears and just the whole thing. Just the whole thing. What did your writing manuscript say that you felt 
brought these UFOs into your site almost immediately after posting it online? Um, at the time, I thought I just kind of made the grade. You know, I mean, it's it's kind of it's a nicely worded paper. You know, it's got some nice lines in it. So I thought, well, they're they're trying to alert us to their presence. So I must, you know, well, this guy can help. This guy could help a little bit. So that's what I thought at the time. And then since then, I've learned, you know, a bunch of other stuff about, you know, the history of my soul and what I've been up to, and they were, they were going to say hi. Mm-hmm. What did those ships look like that came to you 45 minutes after you had posted your manuscript online? <laughs> uh, just two white lights. They're about as bright as Jupiter in the sky. Was that a start? Then, was CJ was that again? a was that a start of multiple sightings? Almost like all of a sudden you became a summoner over time. Um, so for the next the next seven weeks, I had another eleven experiences. Some of them very strange. A couple just UFO sightings. There was um, <clears throat> excuse me. There was a C one thirty. I was doing patrols around where I lived for like about a month after that. Every day I saw it. <laughs> so that went on. So many other experiences were just so strange. It just, uh, I don't know what was going on with some of them. The but one was, thing. That's the one, oh, go ahead. The one thing I find fascinating, and I apologize for putting <laughs> you off there, is that you said this happened to you five years ago. My incidents yep. started happening to me four years ago. And from what I've talked to other thing that happened, maybe it was a world shift or a spiritual shift that happened around that four to five year ago mark for a lot of people that all of a sudden turned them more spiritual, looking up into the skies and having extraterrestrial type contact. Did you ever look into that because you're not the only one that has had this happen. Right. So my understanding, oh geez, uh, well, it, that was part of the ramp up. So something was happening, um, Orion system wide that was going to start there at, at the uh, end of the long count of the Mayan calendar. So this gets into a very long-term plan that's been going on in Orion. Okay. <laughs> So the way I understand all this, if you want to get into this now, we can wait, you know, for a little bit though. But well, we'll we'll, we'll get into the Orion stuff a little bit heavier. I'm more interested in finding out about you right now and introducing you to the audience because, like I said, this is the first time you have spoken publicly about this that you felt the need. It was time to get the information out there, and usually when that happens, and you aren't the first person to come on this show where you've been an absolute rookie before, but usually when that happens, I always like to find out what led up to this point because if the message is so prevalent and that important that it has to come out for the first time on Space Out Radio, I always love to know what brought you to this point. So we went through the five years that you started having the experiences. Did you ever make contact face-to-face with any ET species? Um, during this, uh, about about a year and a half ago, um, a female and an that I had been in communication with teleported into the back of my car briefly. So I saw that. Excuse me, let me get a sip here. <coughs> so with that, um, I saw, yeah, she was in the backyard one time also. Mm-hmm. <laughs> One moment. Well, that cold is that cold is going around. You know, doesn't yep. matter where we are in North America. This cold is hitting everyone pretty hard right now. But it's interesting to see. Um, you know, you had that that uh, Anunnaki being coming to the back of your vehicle. What did that look like? Well, okay, so it's kind of a funny one. Um, she, as I understand it, she wanted to impress people by the fact that I wouldn't be scared of her. So, 
she came in pretty hardcore. She was wearing like a dark hood, like Anakin. Yeah. And <laughs> she, you know, I I could feel there's something that goes on with telepathy. Maybe you're familiar with this, where you can kind of feel their love on your forehead. It's like a, it's kind of like a soothing warm or a soothing pressure. Right. So I felt it get really strong. I'm like, oh my gosh, you're near. And I looked in the rearview mirror, and there she was, the reptilian eyes, the hood on, and I just got exhilarated. It was awesome. Mm-hmm. When you started seeing her, what was your reaction to it? Because for a lot of people, for instance, with myself, when I first saw an extraterrestrial, I mean, it was 2 o'clock in the daytime. It was 200 feet in front of me. It was 10 to 12 feet tall, staring back at me. And when I looked at that, and like even when I explained the story to people, I could see it clear as day, standing straight, straight in front of me. Did you have any panic in you? Did you feel anxious? Did you feel scared? What was going through you? Uh, it was just straightforward exhilaration. But by this point, um, I kind of knew there was, there was a particular Anunnaki family that I was mostly in communication with, and I, I really felt like I knew them. So. I was mostly just really excited. No, I I understand that. And I guess what I'm trying to do is get you to elaborate in regards to what you saw, because most people don't have that type of experience. And usually when you have that type of experience, you have the ability to remember absolutely everything that was around, even what you were wearing that day. It's amazing how the, the memory works when it comes to that. For sure. Um, <coughs> so I can describe um, the Anunnaki a little bit here. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so they're a reptilian species. They evolved from something like the Velociraptor, so either on Earth or any you know, some other planet. Now, they actually look like human in the face which is why we look like human, because we have some of their DNA. So they're, they're the dark green color that everyone has seen reptilian fat, but they can change the color of their skin. Um, they have the reptilian eyes, you know, you know, um, which is actually rather beautiful, in my opinion. Um, let's see. So the tail that people have seen them with, is actually part of a combat suit they wear. One second. <laughs> wow. All right. From something like the Velociraptor, their brain still has, like, the, the biological functionality to have a tail. So the suit then functions off of telepathy or that type of tech that mm-hmm. for the brain to interact with the tail naturally. And I guess it, I guess it feels really cool to walk around like that. <laughs> so the same thing is true with, like, the, the mouth, that whenever we've seen them, they usually have the protruded snout in a way. And they don't, they don't, they can do that a little bit, but usually when I've seen them, that, that's also the suit. Really? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Do you find then that they were, when you had this experience, that it was a very peaceful experience, did it feel benevolence, or was there some sort of malevolency to the experience that you were having? Um, it started off, well, cheapers. The particular family that I got to know were on my side. There were many, many, many of the Anaki that were negative. Mm-hmm. Many, many, many of the greys were negatives. It was so bad that the friendly forces had to be embedded with them, which mm-hmm. is kind of a pretty ugly scenario for them to have had to deal with. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna, so, oh, go ahead. i just uh, wondering if, if you don't mind, uh, you're coming through a little bit quiet. If you don't mind trying to speak up just a tad more, that would be great if you could. Okay. Yeah, I'll hold the phone a little closer here. Mm-hmm. I got a question from Gail in Paranormal Into the Night for you, CJ. How do we know that we have reptilian DNA? Um, well, sadly enough, part of that Sitchin's story is true. How do we know it, know it, know it? Uh, I don't know. I don't know how you absolutely know it. 
Um, our definition of reptilian, you know, is that they're cold blooded, but they are. They're they're warm blooded. So there's not that scientific difference between us. A lot of our personality traits are pretty similar to the reptilians. They're a lot tougher, but a lot of the psychology is very similar. We are talking with C.J. Friesman tonight on Space Out Radio. He has a message from the other side from extraterrestrials from Anunnaki to Gray's. His website, GLH fgg.com if you want to check out the messages that he has been brought forward now this is the first time that cj is coming out on publicly in regards to the messages that he has been getting so we want to make sure that we take some time and you know he gets used to speaking in public because for the first time it can be a little bit tough cj when did you notice that the telepathic communications were coming through to you was it shortly after okay. your manuscript came through no, this so this is this is where it starts getting interesting. So I had temporarily moved out to Colorado during uh, 2013. I had oh, this is kind of a funny story. Uh, let, let, let me tell this story first here. So you know the movie Close Encounters of the Third Kind, right? Yes. I mean, everyone's got to know that movie. So <clears throat> in that movie, when they give the latitude and longitude coordinates. That's not for Devil's Power. It's actually in Colorado. Mm-hmm. So what I what I did is I took you know Stephen Greer's C five protocols. I took all the equipment for that, went up to the coordinates, and sure enough, they showed up. So I got to see a um, number of UFOs that night, including a, an orb. So that ended up kind of. Uh, starting a big commotion because that was (coughs) over an area that the Greys were occupying. So this, in a sense, was a pretty big move by the Anunnaki to to start combat with a lot of negative Greys. Mm -hmm. Um, Shortly after that, uh, telepathy started, and it it seemed like it was human groups using telepathy tech on me, and they were trying to ask me some very personal questions, figure out my motivation kind of scared me. They started doing some stuff where they, like I would try to fall asleep and they start putting images in my mind, like you know, a gray or a reptilian. And yep. uh, it just, you know, I started getting harassed. <laughs> that went on for a number of days until finally I started to hear the Anunnaki talking to me. And I just kind of, I kind of knew it was them. I think they were like adjusting my precognition or, you know, so not not quite your subconscious, but what they call a precognition. It's like the thought before the thought. So they were letting me know who they were, and they were watching the people that were trying to talk to me, and eventually they knocked them off the line and indicated to me I needed to get back to Minnesota, get out of Colorado. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sorry about the cough here, damn. That's okay. That's okay. They, my audience has been used to hearing me cough for the last couple of uh, nights here, so I think it's someone else's turn for once. So I, I'm okay yeah. with that. When you started <laughs> having, when you CJ, when you started having these telepathic communications, for a lot of people who may not recognize what it's like, how did you know it was telepathy from them and just not an overactive imagination? Okay. I mean, I could ask I could ask a question and it'd give me a, a response. They would talk to me in different voices, also. So I, I just I know it's not my brain making up stuff. I mean, I would ask that. I mean, am I just nuts here? And you no, know, they start telling me things, and they even informed me that I'm probably didn't get abducted on your way back to Minnesota. I got abducted. Mhm. What w- what was your abduction like? Well, <clears throat> I don't have any memory of it. But the trip back from Colorado to Minnesota was like 100 miles short, and I missed about an hour and a half. Plus, I saw the UFO that, that came and got me. So, pretty, you know, I, I know that happened. They, they've told me a bunch of times, too. So I'm pretty confident in that. <laughs> it's amazing how they tell you that they're going to do it and they will follow through with it. I I remember when I saw my extraterrestrial for the first time, the person who I was with 
a lady named Samantha Mowat, who will be a guest on this show on the 24th. She had actually told me after that incident, she goes, be prepared. It's going to happen now. If you haven't been taken already before, she said, it's going to happen. And sure enough, that was in April. And September 29th, 2014, I actually woke up on the table with three little gray dudes working on the back of my head. So it's something that I am fully in agreement with that when they tell you they're going to take you, they're going to take you one way or another. They will come get you. Yep. 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 So with your experience then, as you're heading back to Minnesota, did the, um, did the telepathy and did the contact start to pick up more as you got out of Colorado? Yeah, when I the night I got back from Colorado, I got hit really hard by the grades. Um, I was staying in a hotel, and they they came at me pretty hard. They were trying to give me all these like um, mental traps, like you're caught in this, or you know we've done this, and what are you going to do? And kept arguing back, kept arguing back. Um, it started off with a bunch of like star shapes flashing in my eyes, and I couldn't see anything else. And then a really heavy, like, fear feeling. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but I, I came alive, though. I mean, it just, I've always been kind of a timid person. But this, I came alive, and I was, I was like, half ready for it. And it. So what happened then is it went back and forth. Grays would get at me a little bit, try to throw, throw me some lies. And then the Anunnaki would get on there and, and try to give me a little bit of advice on how to deal with it. So what the Anunnaki were trying to do is use me as bait to catch them. And there's a lot of deceptions involved in that. And then at one point during that night, I said in my mind, why am I coming alive to fight? And a, a really wonderful voice came on and said, because you don't want to be beat in your domain. And I just, oh, that's it. You know, this ET stuff, I just love it. Mm-hmm. CJ, I'm going to get you to hold on for the f- first break of the day here. We are talking with CJ Friesman, ET contactee, telepathic communicator with the Anunnaki and Grays. His website where all the articles he has written is glhfgg.com if you want to check it out. You're listening to Space Out Radio. I am your host, Dave Scott. We'll be right back after this break. This is Patrick Webster Small, and I'm going to bring you the Webster Phenomena right here on Space Out Radio, Monday night at 8 p.m. Pacific Time. Every week, I'm going to bring you the freshest information on the globe. I'm bringing you guys the truth, extraterrestrials in the sky, prophecy, chemtrails, rainbow spirits. The Seventh Angel, Biblical Skies, Ancient Gods, Ghost, Spirit, See It, Hear It. So let's do this every Monday night. I'll see you back here at 8 p.m. Pacific Time. Visit PurplePlates.com today. For over 40 years, the Purple Energy Plates have been delivering amazing results for their many customers. Inspired by the great genius Nikola Tesla, the harmony, healing, and energetic effects of the place have proven over and over to be beneficial and often miraculous to thousands of customers. With their money-back guarantee and the many benefits, how can you afford not to get one? Check their site for daily specials and choose from their many energy products. You won't be sorry. Visit them today at purpleplates.com for mind, body, and spirit and... Expect a miracle. You hear footsteps in the empty room above you. A rocking chair begins rocking by itself. Don't be afraid of the things that go bump in the night. Reach for Spirit Story Box. The iPhone app the Huffington Post UK called the only ghost hunting app you will ever need. Spirit Story Box. The spirits are telling their stories. Are you listening? Did you know that Spaced Out Radio is live seven days a week? This is Jim Tyson, host of Spaced Out Weekend. You can listen to my show, Spaced Out Weekend, every Saturday and Sunday night starting at 1 a.m. Eastern, 10 p.m. Pacific. On Spaced Out Weekend, we like to delve into the paranormal, even the newest technologies that have enhanced modern-day ghost hunting. And sometimes, we'll get a little creative and dabble into the crypto world, UFOs, and much, much more. So tune in at www.spacedoutradio.com on the weekends and listen to me, Jim Tyson, on Spaced Out Weekend. 
Hi there, this is Jolene with Reveal It Reiki and Readings, and I want you to relax. Let me help you chill out and get in touch with your body, mind, and soul. In this busy world, sometimes we need to let go, and this is where I can help. Visit my website, rivuletrnr.wix.com forward slash rivulet r and r or my Facebook page, Rivulet R and R, to set up an appointment for relaxation, Reiki, or readings, no matter where you are. Spaced Out Radio listeners will also receive 10% off their first visit. It's time for you to make time for you. The Spaced Out Radio Network can be found at spacedoutradio.com. Hi there, this is Dave Scott. Here, you can join the latest on our weekly shows and news from around the world involving UFOs, cover-ups, cryptids, ghosts, and more. Read articles from our very talented staff and check out our weekly tarot card reading from psychic Catherine. You can also sign up for free on our forum and tell us about your experiences. SpacedOutRadio.com. Always live, always interactive. Ready to find out what's flying up in the sky? Me too. Hi there, this is Rich Giordano. Please join me every Sunday night at 7 for the AZ UFO Show. It's a fast and compelling two-hour show on UFOs, extraterrestrials, conspiracy theories, and much more. Every week we will have great guests and great topics to try and answer the ultimate question, are we alone in this universe or not? So tune in to the AZ UFO Show with me, Rich Giordano, right here on the Spaced Out Radio Network at spacedoutradio.com. Would you like to connect with Dave and his guests? Learn more at spacedoutradio.com for the latest news, features, photos, and articles. Spacedoutradio.com is where you can stay up to date on what's happening around the world and up in the stars. And now, back to Dave Scott. Welcome back to Space Out Radio tonight. I am your host, Dave Scott. Tomorrow night on the show, we will be talking my labs and the weird government conspiracies around it. Misha Johnson, experiencer, will be with us to blow the whistle on what is happening behind the scenes with governments and people and the reptilians. It's going to be very interesting indeed. Hey, if you want to follow us on Twitter, you can do so at Spaced Out Radio. You can give our Facebook page a like, Spaced Out Radio Show. You can also ask to join our private Spaced Out Radio group as well as our other group, Podcast Central. On Instagram, you can follow me at Dave Scott, S-O-R, our YouTube channel. You can subscribe to it, Spaced Out Radio Show, and our website is spacedoutradio.com. Now, we are on a drive for 1,000. We are getting ready over the next couple of weeks to move over to Spreaker from Blog Talk Radio. It's a better setup. It's going to be more user-friendly, and you're going to have an easier time of listening in, too, because I know a few of you out there are struggling with it. So sign up for Spreaker. You can do so via Facebook or Twitter and give Space Out Radio Show a follow. We want 1,000 people. That'll help us apply to get onto iHeartRadio from there. Tonight we are talking with experiencer C.J. Friesman. He's got an important message. His website, glhfgg.com, if you want to check out his work and his writings in regards to the communication that he has been having. CJ, we bring you back onto Spaced Out Radio now. Thank you so much for joining us. Very good. CJ, did you ever sit back after you wrote your first manuscript and saw your first couple of UFOs that it would end up the way it is today? Have you ever sat back and wondered why you, why are you the one supposed to deliver the message from them? Okay, yeah, it- they took me through like an incremental process of kind of letting me know what my soul has been up to. So for the last last uh, couple hundred thousand years, I've been pretty much in regular 3D over and over and over, either being in the ET military or being a contactee. And I've picked up the nickname the Disclosure Kid because of it. So I've been doing this over and over and over living a lifetime, finding about UFOs, doing something to get their attention, and then they do this this process around me where I become the bait, and they, they try to, you know, the enemy, um, you know, there's an attempt to take out the enemy during that. There's a pattern that when a planet is approaching, um, you know, ET disclosure, that's when the most nasty stuff can happen. It's 
it's when the most negative it's when most of the negative spirits come in. It's when most of the negative ETs will, will kind of get situated around the planet because they, they try to crash the planet. So this is it happens every time. It never goes fully peaceful. Mm. Is Earth in trouble? We were. We were in big trouble. Big, big, big trouble. Um, this got really dark. Um, most of what happened here is because it is a major situation developed with a way, way, way too many dark spirits. And when I say dark, I mean full demonic, hardcore demonic. So they're, you know, each one, I guess, have different goals. Some of them is, you know, to really hurt other souls. Other people probably, you know, want to take down Orion, all, all sorts of stuff. Hmm. So as I mentioned earlier, um, the Mayan calendar then was a countdown to the start of this particular war. The way this gets done when it's, when it's this climactic is a whole bunch of planets around the Orion system then were all on the same time schedule. So they had, you know, a bunch of planets had a species on them being raised up, and they probably had a Mayan calendar or something like it too to all mark the same time. So there's a bunch of planets just like Earth with different species on them, all approaching the space age at the same time, what this does is becomes a massive lure then for the dark spirits to come in and try to crash planets, hurt souls, you know, create just a ton of havoc. So the idea is to create a lure and to make it seem like, you know, the righteous or the, the good guys can't quite hold it together. They come in and then, then we get them, crush them, destroy them, all that kind of stuff. Hmm. So that's what's been going on. That's what's been going on around us. It's why Earth got so bad. You know, the the GMO food, fluoride in the water, the um, television drilling, you know, bad memes at the people, the television using like the carrier waves to induce hypnosis. Um, you know, that that pulls down society because people just don't think that well anymore. Um, there's sodium benzoate which is in the soda, and that destroys um, the um, shielding around your synapses so that everyone kind of gets morally neutral and your comprehension decreases. So we've been getting hit really hard this time. It doesn't usually go this bad from what I've learned. Mm -hmm. Are you in contact with them on a daily basis? Yeah, it, it's been continuous since um, the end of 2013, which has been rough at times. It's it's a lot to ask a human to get on telepathy tech because they're listening to everything everything you think. Um, it, the way this was done is because there were so many negatives. Like I said before, the, the friendlies basically had to be embedded with them. They had to make it appear, at least during portions of time, that they were more harassing me than helping me so that the negatives would think they got me. Well, we're going to take down Earth. They're, you know, this guy's getting screwed. They're going after other contactees. You know, so there's been a few of us probably getting getting hit pretty hard with some of this. Mm-hmm. When's the last time you talked to them? Oh, um, just now. I mean, they're, they're always there, always there. So they're with you right now. They're with you telepathically right now. Yep. 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 Now, are we talking the Anunnaki or are we talking the Greys? Yeah, it, it's mostly the Anunnaki. Um, the Greys are, are on there also. Um, what's happened is is the war has now resulted in pretty much all the negatives being knocked out. So it, it goes in kind of a tier process where the uprising starts with the friendlies backstabbing the negatives. And then there's a, <clears throat> and then there's the next layer up, some of the spirituals do the same thing. And then the layer of spirituals above that start doing the same thing. And then the whole thing becomes kind of coordinated to uh, to smash the negatives. Okay. So let me get a sip here. So from what I've learned, when when there's like a space age war going on, there's there's always communication between some of the military leaders 
or at least very various ET military personnel with spirits. Some, uh, a phrase I've come up with during this is you can't have space war without spiritual war. To go hand in hand. Could that be a reason why things are so unsettled here right now on this planet? Absolutely. Absolutely. And we wouldn't be the only ones either. Um, From what I understand, so the Orion Nebula then is like the central hub for Orion. So that place was allowed to get really bad also. So they're supposed to have jurisdiction over us. But what happened there is what I call the negatives kind of got control. So, I, I, you know, things are pretty rough in the Orion Nebula right now also. Well, let's get into it then. What is happening out there with Orion that is contacting you, of all people, to try and get the message out? Okay, so with this planet and then the other planets with a species approaching um, disclosure, the same same situation is going on somewhere on the ground. Um, the position is called a pivot point. So as the communication happens with me, they let other people come in and listen to it, and then you kind of sort out who are the friendlies and who are the negatives so, so that various groups can keep backstabbing the negatives. So this very same thing would be going on on the other planets. So I imagine around this time there's contactees on those planets telling a very similar story. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, what you're... let me add this. So, um, let me add this. So the ETs were all broken up into into groups. So, you know, we have this perspective that ETs know everything and we're just the humans, but they were they were all compartmentalized also. So one gray group may not know what another gray group is doing. One reptilian group may not know what another reptilian group is doing. So they were trying to figure out what was going on as much as we have been. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, what did you want to ask? So when you were in con- like you're saying you're in contact with the Anunnaki at this moment telepathically, what yeah. is their what is their message that they would like to get to the people listening to this show? Um, well, they said I'm doing fine. So, <laughs> um. So I, I guess I'm just supposed to do this. There's, there's, it's not necessarily rules, you know, but I don't think they themselves have much they want to say, I guess. You know, they said we're fine. So. <laughs> so what is going on then? Explain well, to us. It, explain to us this battle because this is the message that you wanted to come on here and felt that you needed to get out was the message that we are having a battle up above and mankind needs to know about it. So take us from start to finish what is happening. There's no time limit here. Okay. So in a sense then, um, since about 23,000 years ago and then I think 17,000 years ago, there were Orion Wars of, of significant size. Um, the same idea was done where you have a bunch of planets approaching disclosure, you know, to be kind of shady and rocky, to lure in the negatives. And my understanding is during those attempts, we kind of failed. And the negatives caused some mass collapse on some planets where then, you know, like the really big spirits have to rush in and grab people's souls really quick before they get hurt. From doing that creates the opening for the negatives then to fly out. So kind of lost track of them. My understanding is most of them then went outside of the galaxy. So then we do this thing again with all the planets approaching disclosure and then Orion Nebula getting, you know, pretty pretty beat up. And then, they, you know, the, the negative spirits come in and then, you know, we try to catch them. So the same as, same as us humans have in some of us and bad spirits in some of us, so are the ETs. So this notion that they're, like, so much better than us and they've solved war really isn't true. They have wars just, just like we do. Mm-hmm. So a lot of negative spirits then were put, you know, were in bodies of ETs around here that then got in communication with a few of the negative spirits. Mm-hmm. So yeah. let me get into the abduction phenomenon then. 
So a, a large portion of that was ETs abducting people, trying to figure out what, whose soul you were. So they've got the whole history of Orion. They know people's personalities, what they've been through. So a lot of people have been abducted then because they're trying to figure out where everybody's at so that they could tell the negative spirits, well, this person's there, go get them. This person's there, go get them. And then also friendly ETs were doing the same thing. They're trying to figure out who they need to protect. Well, who's here? Well, I don't know if this guy's here or not. So that that kind of thing. So where this where this went then, by communicating with this one uh, reptilian family, is my soul was part of the same group that their soul is in. So they were here to be part of this just as much as I was, and, and they found me. A large portion of how you know why they answered my paper and how how this kind of developed around me. Mm-hmm. What kind of weapons are they using? Oofta. Well, hmm. um, I know there's something called a scalar weapon that is, you know, it, it's sort of in a different dimension, but it can hit us really hard. Um, there's something, there's a term called field weapon, where it's, it's something to kind of knock your consciousness down, make you dizzy, make you feel fear. So that, it's like a category of weapon. Um, I, don't, I don't know what spirits use. Uh, there must just be a tremendous no, number of weapons. Um, spirits do use tech. They use, use tech just like you know, anyone else does, which was a really surprising notion to me at first. Um, but they, uh, you know, during most, from what I understand, during most of that spirit, you kind of, you know, get them healthy again, get them healthy again. But during something like this, where, where they've gotten this dark and this demonic, they just kill them. Mm-hmm. So that's a lot of it. There's a big house cleaning going on. I have a couple questions from Paranormal Into the Night for you. Okay. Why, why, this comes from Dino. Why did the reptilians live underground, and do they still take to space? And do they still take space? No, do they still go up into space? Oh. Um, I don't know. I, I know they've been up above the atmosphere at times. I've seen their UFOs up there. But most of the fights have been underground. There's like it's a whole world underground. So, like, a lot of these, like, dumbs that we hear about, I think they've got stuff way deeper than that. So a lot of this stuff, you know, the fights have happened underground. Why are they underground? Well, I think I think the moon just is too exposed at this point, and they all kind of want to be near each other to have the fight anyways. Where are they underground? Have you ever been tipped off to where their bases are? No, I have not. I don't think, no, they wouldn't tell me that. Joe has a question for you. Do the Greys work for the reptilians? No, they're completely independent. I know that at certain times there might be like a temporary alliance between like, let's say one particular Grey group wants to abduct somebody and then the reptilians might want to abduct the same person. And I know they'll, they'll work together at, so that they don't fight over it but I, I wouldn't doubt there's some backstabbing that goes on during or after those type of situations. They're, I mean, they're pretty much all each other's enemy. Mm-hmm. Dino is asking a follow-up question. He heard they are an alien race, Tillians, so why would they still not have access to space or their race up above? My, Okay, yeah, they just confirmed this. Um, the idea is that since there's so many spirits coming in that would be a potential threat, they're a lot safer if they stay, like, in their protected areas. So there's a lot of, you know, electronic fields and, and stuff like that that makes it a lot more difficult for the tech that some some of the spirits would have to get at them. So it, it's a lot more protected down there. However, they could have a fight on the surface in the middle of a city, and you would never know it. They can now they can place walls faster than you could see it, and it, it, their tech is insane. I know one of our listeners, Christine in New York. She sees a lot of battling 
that is not seen with the naked eye, but on video she is able to capture it. Um, do you see these battles really stepping up around the world in majors, epicenters where there are people? No, I don't think so anymore. I, I think we're way past that threshold. Um, from 2013 to, I don't know, maybe three or four months ago, things were, were very serious. But most of the fighting, uh, almost all of the fighting during this whole thing has been in the spiritual domains, and now we won't, we won't see that at all. We, we just won't. Um, when I talk about the spiritual domains, I'm, actually, I'm referring to the extra dimensions, the etheric, um, the multi-dimensions that string theory talks about. Those are the spiritual dimensions. That is mm-hmm. really cool. With that. CJ, uh, Gail has a question from Paranormal Into the Night. Who or what commands these spirits then? Well, um, that would be, well, Big Daddy and then the Archangels a, a lot of the time. But we see so those as a positive. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So where does the negativity in your mind come from, where the greys and and other hostile civilizations? So that a planet can, will get infected by the negatives. So you'll have you know a bunch of negative spirits going into the body of someone who's going to be psychopathic. So, and then the negative spirits will kind of maneuver them, to, or or the anyone else around will kind of maneuver them into power. So, you know, that's why we've had such, so many psychopaths of power on this planet. It's, it's all been orchestrated. It's all got set up. Mm-hmm. So, let's see, what else were you asking there? <clears throat> Just in regards to, you know, the spiritual side of things as we go back. Now, Big Daddy, you're obviously talking about God and, and his team of archangels, you know, and... Yeah. W- and when we're talking about that, we see so much good that is around. We know there are positive extraterrestrial species, and there are negative ones. Now, when you talk about the greys being of a negative connotation, are you talking about a specific set of greys? Because a lot of people will say there are greys like the Zeta Reticuli who are very good and very helpful to mankind, but there are a taller branch of greys that are pretty much a very, very robotic artificial intelligent type creature. Okay. So my understanding of the greys is they're, they're always the short ones, you know, four and a half feet tall or so. Um, there's multiple species of greys. I don't think any one species could be referred as negative. It, it's more that they have problems internally. Some are negative, some are positive. When things get this bad, sort of in Orion, you know, the whole, all their cultures get pulled down. So even... Even any gray planet right now is, is not looking too good. Mm-hmm. The taller grays, that, you know, like the Whitley Strieber um, the book cover. Yes. So the taller ones were actually um, hybrids created by the insectoids. Um, for a while, the insectoids were ruling over a lot of the grays. So um, the insectoids, they're really sharp. They're really smart, really quick. So... They were here when this thing started, and then a situation developed where where they were, the families were able to leave, backstab the negatives. Um, a lot of spirits came in and wiped the rest of them out, which then caused the greys to all separate, because greys will do that. Once um, once you take their top tier away, they all they all group up in, in small groupings. Uh huh. So in general. In general, greys are awesome. In gen- I've, I've been able to talk to a bunch of friendly ones. They're, they're awesome. They're, they're lighthearted, kind of geeky, um, love you know life, love science. Um, they've got a great sense of humor. They're, they're, they're really an awesome species. Um, the reptilians are, are different. They're um, kind of darker, more edgy. Um, Kind of, kind of badasses in a way. Um, <laughs> um, they got this really vindictive sense of humor. It's, oh, they're, they're hilarious at times. I mean, there were times of me on the floor laughing at their sense of humor. It's really, really an incredible species. Mm-hmm. Kareen in the Space Out Radio chat room has a question for you. 
CJ, do you know about Riley Martin's take on aliens? No, I do not. What, what, what's that person have to say? I have no idea. Okay. I'm just asking Kareen's question. Okay. Let's Google, yeah, let's, go, let's Google them on the fly. I should have probably done my homework on that. But, um, you know, moving on here in regards to the grays and the different species, have you ever been told how many other different species have made their way to Earth? Um, the ones... Excuse me. The ones that were here that I know of um, were the grays, the insectoids, uh, the reptilians, and then um, on my web ta- website on the on the ET species page, um, there's a species called um, the willow bees or yellow bees. Um, they're they're kind of different looking. They're like a top tier species. Um, they were here for a while, but all, pretty much all of them are negatives, so they're gone. Um, oh, and then at the top of that page, there's a species called the greening, and they are, they're like, um, these would, these would be the guys you'd refer to as the Jedi, and this is what the movies are about. Star Wars is about the Orion Wars. It, it's like, it's in their culture as much as our culture. Um, these guys are, are supreme combatants, lightning fast minds, ultimate strategists, and they're just, they're incredible. So they were here for a while and did some house cleaning, kind of took over the situation. And uh, I guess I guess they're not here anymore. I haven't heard from them in a while, so they might, might be elsewhere sorting some stuff out. Mm-hmm. CJ, I'm going to get you to hold on here momentarily as we're going to take our break at the top of the hour. You're listening to Spaced Out Radio. We are talking about tele communication with extraterrestrials what's happening up in the orion's belt with cj friesman his website glhfgg.com if you want to check out his writings you're listening to spaced out radio i am your host dave scott we'll be right back the phoenix lights roswell secret military aircraft flying saucers let's check out the sky together Hi, this is Rich Giordano, host of the AZ UFO Show right here on the Spaced Out Radio Network. Every Sunday night at 7, we hit the airwaves to talk about the phenomenon of unidentified flying objects and more. We want to hear your stories. Maybe you've seen what many others have seen. Only one way to find out, the AZ UFO Show on Sunday nights on the Spaced Out Radio Network on spacedoutradio.com. Hi there, this is James Tyson, host of Spaced Out Weekends. And I know you're enjoying tonight's show with Dave Scott on Spaced Out Radio. I just wanted to remind you that Spaced Out Radio continues on the weekends with me. On Spaced Out Weekend, we hit the airwaves at www.spacedoutradio.com starting at 10 p.m. Pacific, 1 a.m. Eastern. We have great guests with interesting chats regarding all things paranormal, supernatural, cryptozoological, and much, much more. So tune in to Spaced Out Weekend and give us a listen. Visit purpleplates.com today. For over 40 years, the Purple Energy Plates have been delivering amazing results for their many customers. Inspired by the great genius Nikola Tesla, the harmony, healing, and energetic effects of the plates have proven over and over to be beneficial and often miraculous to thousands of customers. With their money-back guarantee and the many benefits, how can you afford not to get one? Check their site for daily specials and choose from their many energy products. You won't be sorry. Visit them today at purpleplates.com for mind, body, and spirit. And expect a miracle. Need a break but don't have the time? Tired of life's running around? Hi, this is Jolene from Relaxation and Readings. Let me help you in your time of need. From Reiki to Realm Readings, I can help provide you therapy for your mind, body, and soul. Check out my website at rivuletrnr.wix.com forward slash rivuletrnr. And if you're a listener of Spaced Out Radio, receive 10% off your first session. Rivulet Relaxation and Readings. And don't forget to give my Facebook page a like. It's time for you to make some important time for you. The Spaced Out Radio Network can be found at spacedoutradio.com. Hi there, this is Dave Scott. Here, you can join the latest on our weekly shows and news from around the world involving UFOs, cover-ups, cryptids, ghosts, and more. Read articles from our very talented staff and check out our weekly tarot card reading from psychic Catherine. You can also sign up for free on our forum and tell us about your experiences. SpacedOutRadio.com. Always live, always interactive. 
The Webster Phenomena airs on Spaced Out Radio on Monday night at 8 p.m. Pacific Time. I'm your host, Patrick Webster Small, and I discovered extraterrestrials in the atmosphere, which led me to more discoveries developing the Webster Phenomena, which is the occurrence of extraterrestrials throughout nature. I will explain the Webster Phenomena and all my recent discoveries every Monday night at 8 p.m. Pacific Time, right here on Spaced Out Radio. You hear footsteps in the empty room above you. A rocking chair begins rocking by itself. Don't be afraid of the things that go bump in the night. Reach for Spirit Story Box. The iPhone app the Huffington Post UK called the only ghost hunting app you will ever need. Spirit Story Box. The spirits are telling their stories. Are you listening? Want to call in to Spaced Out Radio? You can. 1-607-203-5344. You can tweet us at Spaced Out Radio or send us a message on Facebook at Spaced Out Radio. And now, back to the show, here's Dave Scott. Hour number two of Spaced Out Radio is underway. Welcome to the night. Tomorrow night on the show, Misha Johnson will be our guest. If you've never heard her story, this is going to get real, real, very quick. We're going to be talking my labs. We're going to be talking shadow governments, what the governments are hiding behind closed doors. Tomorrow night on Spaced Out Radio. It's going to be a great show indeed. Hey, if you want to follow us on Twitter, you can do so at Spaced Out Radio. You can give our Facebook page a like spaced out radio show you can also ask to join our private groups podcast central and spaced out radio on instagram i can be followed at dave scott sor of course our youtube channel is now up and running you can hear our archives there at spaced out radio show and our website is spacedoutradio.com tonight we are talking with et experiencer cj friesman his website and his writings can be found on glhfgg Dot com. If you want to check it out, I highly suggest you do. CJ, welcome back for the second hour here, bud. Hey. Now, we were talking about the battle that is going on up in the Orion area and how they have chosen you as well as a number of people around the world to be in contact with in order to try and let us know what is going on. Why was it so important for you to try to come on the show and bring this message out? Okay, so since we are at a point during this where, um, you know, it can be talked about out loud on on sort of a larger basis, um, it's a good thing then for me to do this live, have some questions answered, have it be me speaking, you know, out loud instead of just having all the time to type stuff out. Um, It would give the position I'm in some authenticity um, it's also not just for Earth, because I, I don't think this interview is going to do a whole lot. I, I suspect some Masons, I suspect some Illuminati will listen to it, and hopefully that will change the path they've been on. Um, it's also for the military of other ETs around Orion. So there are probably interviews like this going on on some of the other planets that were approaching disclosure just like this, so that the people in, in the central hub of Orion, in the Orion Nebula, then, their militaries and governments can, can kind of hear what's going on out here as, in a sense to verify what they might be hearing from other sources. Okay. So when it comes to mankind, have you ever been figured out why they are taking so many people regarding abductions and or contact? And some of those people are not even coming back. Um. I don't know about who they've killed and stuff like that. I think there were some of the big boy spirits that were here, you know, as humans, and they they probably got some of them. Um, some people, I think, stood out a lot more. So, they you know, they were able to kind of figure them out by their personality traits. And then, like, what would happen during an abduction is they were, they were trying to figure out what soul you had. It's, most of the time, sometimes they were just harassing people. But they would mm-hmm. what they would do then is, you know, they get you, and then they stimulate your soul with some tech to kind of wake your soul up, and then they might show images or sounds or video then 
which would then stimulate your soul, and they'd go, oh, that's that guy, all right. And then they know who you are. And then they'd replace that experience with, like, you know, the screen memory so that people wouldn't know that that's what they were after. So there, there's been a deception around that the whole time. That's why there's so many different stories of what happens during an abduction is they're trying to cover up what they're actually doing. So when they take us, what exactly are they doing for the most part? Are they actually well, I, study, are they studying us, or are they trying to almost, you know, just see what we're all about on a personal level? I'm I'm a little lost here. Okay, so a lot of it then was deception. Um, they would they'll set people up and give them a false story so that they disseminate that false story to the public. So there's been a lot of that. Um, I mean, all this love and light stuff, just that that's the new world religion being brought in. So they're, they're bringing that to us where there's like, there's grains of truth in it, and then it's all kind of massaged and reworded in ways so that it, it kind of throws us off, and especially the scientists off, from figuring out the big boy tech. So it's kind of, there's like all these layers of deception that go on during the ET disclosure ramp up. Because like the tech is really, really really dangerous. Um, like, you know, Tesla that figured out, you know, some of, some of the tech there, that, that was a huge, uh, huge problem. Um, mm-hmm. and humans shouldn't, shouldn't have this tech for a very long time. It, it's just wildly too dangerous. So what you are saying is that people who are having ET contact on this side or are being abducted are not having a good experience, but it's the memory of one that is being implanted in there. Yeah. It, often it's going to be, you know, like, what, I don't know, like, every, you know, a lot of the stories of what people have, have had said, said about being abducted. I mean, it sounds pretty rough sometimes, but even that might be a cover-up. They might get, have given you a false memory. Um, so pretty much everyone on Earth has been abducted. They're trying to find every soul in Orion. So some, most people will not have any memory at all. The people that have been allowed to have a memory or a screen memory are people they are probably trying to harass, which then indicates that that person is probably a pretty strong soul and they were trying to get the person involved in it. Okay. I'm an ET experiencer. Okay. I have I have come across five extraterrestrials. And in my opinion, I have not had a bad experience yet. Okay. The first the first time when I saw an extraterrestrial, I mentioned it earlier, the 10 to 12 foot being, I did not get taken, did not have any missing time. Neither did the friend of mine who was with me and she's a multiple ET contactee. Okay. So when I have an experience like that where nothing happens, and in fact, they were telepathically communicating with Samantha, worried about and concerned about my well-being because this was the first time I was seeing an extraterrestrial with my open two eyes, what would you write that off as then if the Um, encounters are of negative experience? Um. I wouldn't necessarily say getting abducted and having them try to figure out who your soul is is a negative experience, you know, just verbatim. Um, if, if if the friendlies figured you out, then they're watching over you, and that's a good thing because then it means friendly spirits also know where you're at. So mm-hmm. as much as it could be a bad thing because the negatives have figured out who you are, it can also be a good thing. I mean, everyone in Orion had to get figured out. Um I think I think a lot of UFO sightings, um, if it seems like the UFO was kind of paying attention to you or wanted your attention, um, it's fair to say that during many of those, you were probably abducted during it, and that's the memory they left you with. Because they, they, they have complete control over what we remember and don't remember. No, I, I understand that. But in my experience, and I'm going to speak on myself here because I'm not going to speak for anybody else. When I had that experience with Samantha, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, only 500 yards behind me, 400 yards behind me is where my wife is. 
She did not say that we were missing any time. She did not okay. say that that we were that you know if they did take us, which I do not believe they did because I don't recall being taken. It didn't feel like I've been taken. Okay, they would have brought us back on to that exact same moment then. And they even said to us, point blank, through Samantha, that they were not taking us. They were here to introduce themselves to us. So if all beings are created by God then, as you stated, and I I firmly believe that as well, and I am a believer in God, I make no bones about that, that, then my question is, how can all ETs be bad? Oh well, they, they they certainly are. They certainly are. Um, like like I was saying earlier, um, the Anunnaki then had a lot of negative in with them, but they were also friendly. Um, the same thing with the Greys. They had a lot of negatives were here, but they were also friendly. So it you can never really say one species is bad. It just it just doesn't work out that way. Mm-hmm. Um, with with your experience there, I don't I don't know. I mean, I don't want to take that away from you either because what, what if they really were just trying to give you a positive nudge, you know, stick with it, keep looking into the subject. Could have been that. Could have been that. Gail has a question from Paranormal Into the Night. Can you please explain, CJ, in different words, why E.T. is so interested in our souls? Okay, so it is very much so that they were sort of doing a job for the spirit. Um, a lot of the spirits weren't weren't here, you know, for most of this wrap up because they they want to stay hidden. They don't want the negatives to know that that they're here in mass numbers. So in a sense, the ETs were doing the job to figure out the soul within us to then let the spirits know either either the friendlies or the negatives. You know, they like, okay, that's this person. Okay, that's this person from that story. Okay, that's that's this guy. We know him by this name. So it, that that is a lot of it. A big part of it. Mm-hmm. I I can understand that in regards to it. I mean, the soul is the last full connection that we have to whatever we believe as a higher power, whether it's God or something else that people believe in. For me, it is God, and I understand that they would want to investigate that. Is there any way that they can take that soul for their own? No, no. If they. Uh... If they pop you out of the body, you're up in the spiritual immediately, and then you, you're you you know who you are all of a sudden. It would be, you know, that that's where most of our time has been spent as you know as a being. We've almost always been in the spiritual. Sometimes you're in 3D down here, living you know a singular life. So if they if they knocked you out of your body, you're you're out there, and then either either the friendlies are going to grab you and get you out of harm's way, or the negatives are going to jump on you and then you're gonna fight. You've said many times so far that the ETs want to know who our soul is. Are they trying to figure out if they have a connection because of the reincarnation that happens? Are they trying to figure out if that's a soul that they've already connected to at one point in time? combination of R2-D2 and Stephen Hawking. Oh, no. So there, there was a little bit of a, there was a, little bit of a, of a, of a, a signal break there. I apologize for that, CJ, but if you don't mind just uh, quickly uh, restating that answer about the souls, if they're trying to recognize the souls from reincarnation to where the reincarnation is now. Okay, so we've all got a history in the spiritual domain, and 
we've all got a history of lifetimes we've lived in 3D. Certain souls are known to be really, really strong, really good willed, and those are the ones that they want to find out where you're at, so, they, so that the negative spirits can maybe hurt you or create tragedies around you and all that kind of stuff. Same is true for the friendly spirits. They want to figure out, well, where's this soul at? Where's this soul at? So on, on one level, they want to figure out who, who your soul is. Another thing that would happen is one group might abduct somebody, um, awaken their soul a bit, give them some scenes that they think you should recognize, and then be wrong. You know, well, it wasn't that person. And then a different ET group, you know, maybe, maybe it was Grey that abducted you the first time, and now a different Grey group might abduct you figure out who you are, and then lie to the, the first group, saying, oh, no, it's this person. And then that first group might go and abduct you again to see if that other group was telling them the truth or not. So there's layer and layer of deception. Um, and then the same type of deception would happen with spirits, where they're telling each other one story, and it, it's not true. And the spirits are trying to figure out which of the spirits amongst them went dark. So right. you don't always know. Just you don't always know. So there'd be a lot of friendly spirits embedded with negative spirits. There would be like a group of good spirits that wouldn't know that some of the ones that were in the group were negative. So as the war goes on, then you start to judge people by their actions. Well, what is that person really trying to do? Or does this person know where that person was at? Oh, that soul did that crime. Okay, well, now we know it's negative. So right. any type of deception that you can picture going on in 3D has also been happening in the spiritual domain. Well, this leads to a question from Bill Cardwell in the Paranormal End of the Night chat room. Do you think, then, that there is any chance that you, CJ, are being deceived in order to push the Anunnaki agenda? Um, I don't think so. It's I there's When I communicate with them, because my soul is a bit awake now because of the tech being on me, there's certain souls I just know. Like someone will say hello, and I'll get this whole like warm feeling. This, you know, oh gosh, I know you, I know you, and that that's how it's been for a number of souls that, or Anunnaki I've communicated with. And again, the telepathy tech it kind of interacts with your soul. So if they don't block that portion of it and, and let that sort of the higher frequency come through the tech, your your soul gets stimulated, and like oh hey hey. And that kind of thing. So that, that's happened a bunch of times. Um, another reason I don't think this is all kind of like a made-up thing is why are abductions happening? Why has have things for Earth gotten so bad? Um, you know, just the explanatory power is what gets me every time. I, I try to break the story and say, well, that doesn't make sense, or this part's inconsistent, and I'm just not able to do it. Well, mm-hmm. also... Um, at one point, they did go through some of my soul memories, and that that is one heck of an experience. Um, I got to see myself as different species, and you're reliving the moment. I mean, you feel like you were just there. It, it, it's an incredible experience. So I absolutely know I've been that species. I absolutely know I've been that species before. Stuff mm-hmm. like that. So I got to see five or six. Um, scenes then that I got to kind of re-experience from, from past lives. Have they ever talked to you about the spiritual warfare that is going on on this planet, let alone everywhere else in the universe as we try and figure out who's who and where we are supposed to go as a species? Okay, so my understanding with, um, well, specifically with Earth here, um, a planet that is pre-disclosure will often have a lot of souls that kind of need to regrow or fight off some of their weaknesses. So you, you might get put down on a planet like this to kind of have the experience of, of living in 3D or fighting off tyranny to kind of get you fired up to fight that stuff off again. So loosely speaking, the idea that this kind of been a prison planet is actually true. Um, the ramp up then also to ET disclosure is when a lot, a lot more kind of shifty, a little weak, and really dark souls will get put on the planet too. But it's not all that. Some of us are, you know, really strong. So if you know those people in your life that kind of hold things together, those people that kind of like, I don't know, just 
they lift you up, you know, when you're around them and they take care of people, those are some of the folks that are on the plant to kind of hold this thing together. Mm-hmm. So there's that going on for sure also. We are talking with C.J. Friesman tonight on Space Out Radio. His website, glhfgg.com, if you want to check out his articles. Now, when it comes to technology, how have they gone into the technical side of what is going on? Have they filled you in on how they get here, how they can get us out of their own, our own houses, whether it's full body or spiritually, when they abduct people? Have they given you any inkling whatsoever? Okay. Um, there is teleportation. Um, it's not the Star Trek teleportation where you're put into a data stream. It, it's done through the etheric domain. So in a sense, they put like a bubble around you, and then that goes right through the etheric, which can go faster than the speed of light, and then pop you out on the other side. And it, it happens so fast, you, won't, you barely want to notice. Mm-hmm. So teleportation is real. It's it's in a sense it's kind of like you're in like a bubble, and then that's kind of a ship in itself. And then that can go through the etheric really quick to like you know their target location, and then that would pop you back into 3D again. So it's it's teleportation, but that's how they do it. Does the American government have that technology? Uh. I don't know. What's your gut feeling? Well, I ooh, I don't know. I think there's been a constant fight over that. If they get it, then they lose it. If they then develop again, then they lose it. Just a guess, though. I personally think they have it, but that's just me. Okay. Question from Joe in Paranormal Into the Night. We can't tell who the good guys are from the bad guys as far as the aliens go, and they're at war. Why should we trust any of them? Ooh, I, I wouldn't right now. Um, I'd be careful with that. I think most of it's getting sorted out, but, yeah, be be real cautious. Um, just uh, on the light side, excuse me, just on the light, mm. light side of that, us humans with the tech that we've developed and some of the tech we've got from them, we would have wiped ourselves out by now. So even though some of them were negative or a lot of them were negative, they weren't to take us down until the spiritual war happened. Then that's when they were going to try to do it. So despite some of them or most of them being negative, they were preventing us from destroying ourselves. Mm -hmm. So there's been that going on, and it seems like the big save has happened. We've been through a number of stages that were supposed to be the Armageddon, but they were prevented. Um, Let's see. Um, well, okay, I'll add this. The, um, in terms of the Bible and Revelations, where they talk about the big Armageddon and all that, that's the kind of stuff that can happen on planets at certain times during these types of things. So then what happens is it's negative spirits try to make it happen, and then that's how the families kind of catch you because they see you doing it. So in a sense, Revelations is a bit of a, a trap and a bait try to, to see if the negatives will do it, and when they go for it, that's how you catch it. Hmm. Who knows about so this? Who knows all about this on our planets? Like our occasion with the extraterrestrials that they have with our governments here on Earth, are they in the know of what is truly going on, CJ? I kind of doubt it. I probably getting a lot more right now, though. <laughs> Um, my website's been up for a while. At certain times, they'd let me know that certain groups were listening. Yeah, there's some groups listening right now. You probably should explain a few things to them. The idea that I understand here is that um, we are we are supposed to have an Illuminati on the planet. The Anunnaki kind of are the Illuminati, and then there's humans that get into it. The idea there is that the planet is managed then from the shadows, but what happened here is the Illuminati went very, very dark. So by by this story getting explained then, what's supposed to happen then is it kind of cleans up. They're supposed to change the direction. Yeah, fine, have all the money, kind of run the planet. Part of the reason I'm explaining this 
So if they start figuring out that the stories they've been, you know, which of the stories are they hearing that is true? Are we trying to crash it or are we just trying to run it still? Right. Right. CJ, I'm going to get you to hold on here. We are going to go into our final break of the night. We are talking with CJ Friesman, his website, glhfgg.com. Intriguing writings on what is going on above us that we are not being told around the Orion constellation, my favorite constellation when I look up in the stars at night. Hey, you're listening to Space Out Radio. I am your host, Dave Scott. We'll be back after this break. Want to find out what's coming up on the Spaced Out Radio Network? Go to spacedoutradio.com where you can find our daily list of shows and guests appearing throughout the week. Want to tell us your story? Be sure to sign up for the Spaced Out Forum for free. Maybe you have a psychic question. Drop in and say hi to Catherine in Cat's Corner. Spacedoutradio.com, your 24-hour source for UFOs, ghosts, conspiracies, and more. Check it out today. Are you one of many who's had a UFO or ET experience? Listen up. The AZ UFO Show is on every Sunday night at 7 on the Spaced Out Radio Network. We talk about UFO sightings across the globe, conspiracy theories, government cover-ups, and more with me, Rich Giordano. I want you to know what's going on in the skies above you, so tune in to the AZ UFO Show on Spaced Out Radio Network on spacedoutradio.com right before Spaced Out Weekend. Our show is literally out of this world. Visit purpleplates.com today. For over 40 years, the Purple Energy Plates have been delivering amazing results for their many customers. Inspired by the great genius Nikola Tesla, the harmony, healing, and energetic effects of the plates have proven over and over to be beneficial and often miraculous to thousands of customers. With their money-back guarantee and the many benefits, how can you afford not to get one? Check their site for daily specials and choose from their many energy products. You won't be sorry. Visit them today at purpleplates.com for mind, body, and spirit. And expect a miracle. You hear footsteps in the empty room above you. A rocking chair begins rocking by itself. Don't be afraid of the things that go bump in the night. Reach for Spirit Story Box. The iPhone app the Huffington Post UK called the only ghost hunting app you will ever need. Spirit Story Box. The spirits are telling their stories. Are you listening? Brand new discovery beats NASA. This is Patrick Webster Small bringing you the Webster Phenomena every Monday night at 8 p.m. And you know what we're going to do? We're going to talk about amazing stuff. Have amazing guests. That's all that is, man. You know the rest as E.T. is up in the sky. I'm going to tell you which way and why. And we're going to have a little combo about these ETs in the sky. We're going to chill. This is Patrick Webster Small, and I'll be seeing you every Monday night at 8 p.m. Pacific Time. Write it down on Spaced Out Radio. Is the 24-hour world starting to wear you down? Let me, from Rivulet Reiki and Ratings, lend you a hand. Hi, this is Jolene. And if you're in need of Reiki or a realm rating, come to my website. Rivulet rr.wix.com forward slash Rivulet R and R and let us help you out. At Rivulet, I specialize in healing your body, mind, and soul, no matter where you are. And be sure to check out the Rivulet R and R Facebook page for your best deals. Remember, it's time for you to make some time for you. Hi there, this is Jim Tyson, host of Spaced Out Weekend. When you've had a busy week and you're just wanting to chill out and relax, how about listening into my show? That's right, Spaced Out Weekend. I focus on the paranormal, the arcane, I even dip into the techie side of things, and much, much more. And I would love for you to come in and check it out. Remember, Spaced Out Radio goes seven days a week. Dave Scott, Monday through Friday, and me, Jim Tyson, rolling through the weekends. I look forward to having you stop by for a listen every Saturday and Sunday night, 1 a.m. Eastern, 10 p.m. Pacific, only on Spaced Out Radio. Miss most of tonight's show? Don't worry, you didn't miss a thing. You can head to our website, where you can download the podcast at spacedoutradio.com. Now, back to tonight's show. Here's Dave Scott. 
We've rounded third. We're heading for home on Space Out Radio tonight. Thank you so much for joining us live as we do this seven days a week. My show Monday through Friday and Uncle Jimbo James Tyson Saturday and Sundays in the cabin while I wander off into the wilderness, usually find a cave with Wi-Fi to tune into Space Out Weekend with James Tyson. Tomorrow night on the show, we have Misha Johnson. She has an incredible story about my labs, military cover-ups, shadow government, shadow military. We're going to get into that tomorrow night. It's going to be an interesting topic indeed on Space Out Radio. Hey, if you want to follow us on Twitter, you can do so at Space Out Radio. You can give our Facebook page a like, Space Out Radio Show, and you can ask to join our Space Out Radio group as well as our other group, Podcast Central. On Instagram, I can be followed at Dave Scott, S-O-R, your YouTube channel. You can subscribe to that, which is Space Out Radio Show. Our website, which will have a new look coming up. Mrs. Space Out Radio was working on it this evening. Looks really good. It is spacedoutradio.com. We're going to try and fire that up for Monday next week because I'm a little too excited to get it up and going again. New look, new logo, a little bit of a new attitude. Are you experienced? That's what we are going by. No, we're not going with Jimi Hendrix there. Tonight we are talking with C.J. Friesman. He has received some incredible messages and downloads from the Anunnaki, from the Orion system. His website is glhfgg.com. CJ, welcome back for the final half hour. Hey. I want to start this off with a question from Corrine in the Space Out Radio chat room. She's concerned about you. And she asks, CJ, have you had any personal negative effects since you started having contact with the Anunnaki and the Grays? Oh, thank you very much for the question. Um, yeah, I've, I've, this has been really stressful, really tough at times. Um, there were times trying to fall asleep where I was having imagery put into my mind that I really did not want to see. It was really rough at times. Um, I've been hit by some weapons that were pretty rough. Um, you get that sort of that pinky feeling on your heart sometimes. Um, a back spasm one time that was really rough. Had some really, really bizarre thing happen. I, I don't know what happened, but I mean, it must have been right at the edge of what it could do because that, that one hurt really bad. Um, sometimes there's been, cause sometimes the negatives are allowed to communicate with me and they, they'll be so offensive and tell me things that, you know, haven't done to people's souls that are just, so horrendous. I mean, this these dark forces, they are full-scale demonic. It's um, it's what happens to a soul. There's there's like um, like the constitution of your soul gets flipped, and so bad things are good and good things are bad, and it just gets really far. Um, um, lost all my friends. Um, <laughs> it's been it's been a kind of a rough journey at times. You know, I, I was pretty pretty suicidal for a while during that. You know, just like, I can't got to get away from this. I cannot take it. But, you know, then shortly after, you know, things would lighten up again. I'd hear from some people that I cared about. And uh, a lot of the humor gets you through, too. We switch over to Paranormal End of the Night. Pat Penn has a question. If we are all descendants from different races of aliens and they are all fighting each other for domination, is that why we have races of people on Earth that are always fighting for each other, tribal wars, etc.? And so will our wars end if their wars end? Um, okay, I'll take that in reverse order. Um, our wars will lighten up a lot once this situation is over. Um, in general, ETs and even spirits aren't necessarily against war. Um, it's not a bad experience for the soul to go see what you're made of. It's not a bad experience for society to pull together and, and try to hold on and, and fight off a dark force, you know. I mean, there's, there's triumphs to be had in war. So it's not, it's not terrible, terrible, terrible. It's just how dark they get, which is the problem. Mm-hmm. Um, with different races on Earth, a, this is really fascinating, really fascinating. There's sort of reflections, then, of different species out there. 
Um, there, there is, there are elvins out there. Elvins are, are a real species. So in our, I guess, sci-fi or science fantasy stuff, you know, the, the cute women with, you know, with the pointy ears, that's a real species. That's why, that's why they're in some of our fantasy stuff. Um, so in a sense then, um, Bohemians, um, the Czech Republic, Russia, some of those countries then, the people there then have have a touch of the of the elven DNA in them, and so they they then carry some of those characteristics. Um, in general, the, the uh, Native Americans then were closer to what the Anunnaki are. They were they were tougher like that, with the lo- more longer narrow faces. Um, as it turns out, Asians then are not they don't necessarily have gray DNA. It would be that the human DNA then is sort of massage then to give them more some of the characteristics of grays. So that's why Asian people are a little bit more family orientated, a little bit more group orientated, and are, you know, typically fast thinkers and that kind of a thing. So some of our attributes then are reflections then of other species that are out there. Celeste would like to know in a, you know, I don't want to put this, it's not a real religious question, but in the fact that do any of the ET species believe in a god or goddess or have faith in a higher power? Yep, 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 yep. Um, even in the spiritual domain, there might be a few, there might be some atheists, but as it seems to have turned out, they, they all seem to, by majority, believe in God. Um, I know one one of the Anunnaki I spoke to was a Christian. You know, big fan of JC, big fan of JC. Um, they all know who he was. They've they've talked about him. You know, they they you know the friendlies were a fan of JC. They liked what he did. Mm-hmm. In regards to the soul, are we then? And I know we've touched on the soul a couple of times tonight. But I'm curious, when with our souls being connected and interconnected through reincarnation and that we have had, in your opinion, ET contact throughout our multiple lives, is there then a type of connection or download that we personally have in order to reveal that connection to the extraterrestrials, albeit whether it's the Anunnaki, the Greys, the Pleiadians, the Arcturians, or whoever? I'm trying to think of what that question meant. Um, what is that question? In your opinion, what is the person asking? What I'm asking is, when it comes to the soul, and because the soul, as you stated earlier, has had connection throughout reincarnated lives with extraterrestrials, were we given any specific types of downloads or or memories that we hold on to, to the connections that we have with the extraterrestrials, whether it's the Anunnaki, the Greys, the Arcturians, the Pleiadians. Okay, uh, I'll try to say it this way. Um, if if you consider that your soul maybe is millions, if not billions of years old, we've lived lives all over the place. Perhaps some of us in different galaxies at times. Most of us, well, probably all of us right now on Earth and, and all the souls in Orion have all probably been in Orion for a very long time. This fight has been has been gearing up for a very long time. So when you think of it that way, um, you know, obviously we're all human right now and have lived lives as a human before. We've also for sure lived lives as different species. Um, humans, no matter how far we evolve, we're really at the bottom. Humans are not meant to be a, a super advanced species. So we're never we're never going to get as quick minded as the greys or the reptilians. Mm-hmm. So in a sense, from my perspective, it'll be a treat to be one of those species again. This, uh, I got to at one point um experience the consciousness of a grey and it, it felt so it felt tight. It felt um, smooth. The thoughts were just easier. I, I felt that for about two or three seconds. Um, you feel a lot more cushion from your body. Just the whole experience just seemed way better than being a human. Joe is asking, how will we know when the alien war is over and who won? 
Okay, so the idea of what's going on right now is that all this stuff has to get sorted out before disclosure happens. If disclosure were to happen during this thing, there'd be so much chaos and the negatives would pile in and then we, we might have the Armageddon. So if we have disclosure, like if the big announcement happens, it means the war is over. So is disclosure then a good thing or a bad thing? Um, well, I guess each to each their own. It's going to be rough for us, though. I, I suspect disclosure will come with an economic collapse. I suspect then the NWO is going to try to give the world the one world currency. Um, throughout the history of humans, whenever whenever we have the uh, an economic crisis, we always return to gold and silver. Hopefully, that's the principle then that, that pushes through this. Also, um, I know I know some people think there'll be martial law. I don't know if it'll get that bad. And I'm just speaking from my own opinion right now. Um, hopefully, it doesn't get get super 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 rough. It'll probably be stressful for a while. I, I talk to them so often. What are you going to say to Earth? How's it going to go? You know what? You know, <laughs> are you guys going to say stuff to us or not? And it really seems like they're just not gonna. Like there'll be the announcements, but I I, I don't think they're going to talk to us for decades, honestly. So when you see somebody like John Podesta who is pushing Hillary Clinton for disclosure if she gets into the White House. Do you take that as a positive or a negative? Well, oh, I, I take it as a positive. I mean, I want disclosure to happen. I, I can't wait to see, you know, the president get out there and engage the people. And Well, it turns out they're real. You know, I mean, I'll be in tears. I'll just be so ecstatic. I imagine other people will go into a panic. Um, I suspect people will get kind of a claustrophobic feeling, like, ooh, there's something here I don't understand, you know, for a lot of people. And then I think a lot of other people will be like, oh, finally, you know. And I, I suspect the media will then have to do its thing, you know, uh, well, get this expert on, get this expert on, and, and try to keep people peaceful and calm during it. But, you know, it, it'll probably get a little rocky when the abduction stuff starts being brought up. I don't know how they're going to handle that. We have heard so much that there is a guardian council around Earth that is up in space that really makes it uh, safer for us down here, even though it looks like we're on the midst of going all insane and bat crap crazy here on Earth, especially with what's happening in the Middle East. Apparently, there is a group of extraterrestrials way above in a council sort of meeting area that will not allow us to blow up each other on a nuclear basis or have that World War III. Are they able then to control what is happening in the interstellar battles as well? Or do they just stake... Uh, stake their claims on Earth to try and protect us as the newer species of the group? Hmm. Um, okay. How I understand it then is... Yeah, there was that too. Um, uh, <laughs> let me think for a moment. So, so the Anunnaki were going to protect Earth. They've got, they've got a, you know, the friendlies at least have, you know, kind of a big brother kind of feeling towards us since we share some DNA with them. It's been, you know, sort of their challenge to raise up the species. And the reptilians are really, really honor driven. So if if they've made the agreement to be in, in the Anunnaki, which is the name of their military, if they've made that agreement they'll they'll fight so hard to you know to to come through. There have been some invasions of the solar system, probably from the Orion Nebula from what I remember. Well, they came in and we had a massive fight here, but the guys here won it. Even the negatives that were here fought them off. So you can you can even make use of the negatives to treat something like that. Some council you're talking about uh, that I don't know about. I think I think the ETs were so broken up that there really couldn't be uh, a singular entity that was that was running them. If anything, it would have been the spirituals. Back to the disclosure topic for a moment here. Joe in Paranormal Into the Night is asking, who will disclose, the government or the aliens? 
Um, very good question. So, from my understanding, it would be uh, w- once we think we've got it settled and we can have the green light for disclosure, it will be the reptilians then that manage elements in the government to go ahead and do it. Like, yeah, we want it to happen. What those channels of communication are, there's probably a few degrees of separation, but it will it will happen when we're ready for it to happen, but we will do the disclosure. You don't think that they are just going to drop a spaceship on the White House lawn like many people are hoping for? No, I don't think so. I, th- I think it will fa- far more likely be the president in the United States that gets up there and, you know, we know they're here. We, I don't know what the, I don't know how they'll go about it, but it, it'll be that way. So, you know, the ETs will drive it to happen, but it'll be, you know, in my opinion, I, it'll be the government that says they're here. Do you think it has to be on this planet the American president who announces disclosure officially? Or could it be someone like the Pope, someone like Vladimir Putin, or maybe the Chinese, or someone along those lines? I don't know. I really don't know. I mean, yeah, if Putin wants to do it, that'd be cool. Um, I suspect it'll be the USA, just because most most of the problems that have happened, um, most of the grades were, were here underground in the USA. Most of the tech that either underground with the ETs or, or ended up in human hands has been underground here. So the United States really has been the hub of, of you know, a lot of the war that's been going on. So it would probably be the USA, I, you know, just from world perspective, supposed to be the leader of the free world, you know. But, hey, if it comes out of Russia, that'd, that'd be fine by me. Yes, but to a lot of people, like you just mentioned, with America being – you know, the leaders of the free world, if they're not the ones who come out with disclosure, could, in your opinion, they be the ones wearing egg on their face? Because, obviously, if the Americans do not come out with it, or the President of the United States does not come out with it, then it could encapsulate a whole different genre of questions as to what the Americans are hiding. (laughs) That's a good point. Yeah. Um, I, I think the way it's set up is that once once the ETs decide that it should happen and that'll that'll be, you know, basically by the spirits that are them know, yeah, you guys you can go for it now. We we've, we've got it under control, go for it. So it'd be the spirits letting the ETs know they can do disclosure, and then the ETs then managing Earth then to to get who they want to have do disclosure. So it might be a coordinated effort then. You know, it wouldn't be the USA. It might be multiple countries all on the same day, which makes a lot of sense to me. Like a UN announcement or something along those lines. Sure, sure, sure. Do the Anunnaki want disclosure? Yeah, last time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, you know, it's part of the process we're in. Um, I suspect then about the time that we have it, so will the other planets in Orion that have the species being raised up on them. Um, a perspective to have is that this this is really, Earth is property of Orion. It's, part, you know, it ruled by or under the governance of the Orion Nebula, and it's sort of an, a reptilian Anunnaki planet being raised up. But it's not, not really our planet. Hmm. So whose planet is it? Is it the Anunnaki planet? Is it Orion's yeah. planet? Yeah, kind of, kind of both. I, I think, I think this is like this planet has been used to raise up other species before. We're, we are not the first. So when you look at the Sumerian stuff and the fact that the reptilians were raising us up back then, there, there could have been countless times before that that other species were raised up. Because I understand that this planet only raises up humans and you know, or reptilians, so mm-hmm. our his, you know we don't know what's been happening for the last millions of years. We, we simply don't have any evidence of it. What about other groups? Because we focused on the Anunnaki tonight, and I know that's who you're in communication with. But groups like the Pleiadians or the Arcturians or the the Nordics, do they have a say in what happens here? 
Um, I haven't had any communication with them. There may there might be a lot of layers of deception on that, so I, I think I'll just leave that open for people to try to figure it out for themselves. In your mind, the, then, in your mind, then, sticking with the Anunnaki, do you feel then that disclosure is something that needs to happen, or is it? Something yeah, I that, think. Yeah, I think okay. our planets get beaten up, beaten up from the secrecy. Um, a, a pattern that I kind of figure has been going on is this secrecy from UFO cover-up has gotten all these psychopathic groups to kind of align with each other. So if you think about it, the Masons, the Illuminati, various intelligence groups, then have all been having to maintain a secret, which is which has drawn in a lot of psychopaths into that model of secrecy, which has got them all tied to each other. So if we have a bunch of psychopaths <laughs> all tied together by a secret that are running the planet, that that's really bad. So as soon as we can have disclosures that Are you still with us, CJ? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, you're breaking up like uh, Stephen Hawking again. Okay. Uh, and yeah, we're uh, still having a little bit of phone problems with you in regards to your last answer. You know, um, we'll keep trying to pay, move on here as we're down to our final few minutes here on Space Out Radio tonight. Our guest tonight is C.J. Friesman. His website, glhfgg.com, if you want to check out the writings and the information that he has been told through communication telepathically with the Anunnaki and certain species of gray. Is this war, C.J., visible from someone's eyes if they look up to the Orion constellation? No, it wouldn't be. Um, all other all tech can be hidden. A lot of ET tech then is in the etheric dimension. So then you'll have their 3D tech, but then that interacts with tech that they have in the three in the etheric. Telepathy then is done with etheric tech, not done with like normal EM fields. It's it's that it's that dimension can be done there. So we really don't see them unless they want us to see them. Hmm. So not even with a, a high power telescope or anything that we could not see a battle going on if we focused on Orion in the middle of the night on a clear night? No, you, you wouldn't see it. Um, from what I understand is during battles, they can even scoop up, you know, if they if they pop the ship and it's exploded, they can even grab all that material in a moment and grab it and harvest it and use it for, you know, energy again. So it's all been done very professionally that we haven't been seeing it. So it just it shows that there's been you know, at least some control over the fights that people are able to grab that stuff right away so nobody sees it. Mm-hmm. I mean, they, they, can grab, they can grab the photons after, after the explosions happen. That's how fast this stuff is. Here's an interesting question from Joe. And he's been very busy on our chat room and paranormal into the night tonight. Thank you so much, Joe. If there is disclosure, will the aliens help us with things to cl- help clean up this planet, like with the Fukushima nuclear disaster? That's a good question. <sighs> hmm. I didn't like their answer on that. Yeah, I don't know. Um it's possible, uh, in my opinion, this, this isn't coming from them. They don't tell me a lot of what's going to happen. In my opinion, uh, a lot of some of the humans that have got a hold of some, some pretty decent tech. So if we can get disclosure to happen and then bust into what the black budget programs have been researching, we might already have the tech to solve a lot of the problems already. But uh, I don't know. They don't, I, I discuss this stuff with them sometimes, like how is disclosure going to go? And yeah, they just don't give me very, very clear answers on that. 
We are down to the final couple minutes on Space Out Radio tonight. CJ, I would love it if you could tell people what they can find on your website, glhfgg.com, and how can they get a hold of you for more information? Uh, well, via, via that site, um, you can get to my YouTube and send me a message there. Um, that, that's pretty much the best way. Or, or Facebook. Yeah, so on the contact page, it either goes to Facebook or YouTube. So either one of those uh, paths will work. Um, everything on the website is everything we've been talking about tonight. Um, also, what we didn't get into tonight has to do with uh, some of the physics of the other dimensions and oh, a little bit of physics about the soul, just a little bit, just a little bit. Well, we may have explain some of that stuff. Awesome. C.J. Friesman, thank you so much for being on Space Out Radio tonight, man. I really appreciate you taking time out, and I know – there was a little bit of nerves on your end being your first interview that you've gone live with, but thank you so much for uh, sitting in the hot seat and telling us your story as well as answering all the questions from the chat room tonight. Really appreciate it. Okay. Just we're all in this together. So hang in there, everyone. All right. CJ Friesman, once again, his website, glhfgg.com if you want to check it out I highly suggest you do his articles are just fascinating do you have a topic or guest you'd like to hear on Spaced Out Radio email us dave at spacedoutradio.com send us a quick message on twitter at Spaced Out Radio or a message on our facebook page Spaced Out Radio Once again, here's Dave Scott. And once again, I want to thank C.J. Friesman for being on Space Out Radio tonight. His website, once again, glhfgg.com. Check out his writings. Give him support on his YouTube channel as well, because it's important that we do that. You know, he's got some great writings on there. You want to check it out. Tomorrow night on the show, we are going into the shadow government. We are going to be talking with Misha Johnson. She's out of Las Vegas. She's had some wicked experiences with my labs, MK Ultra. We're going to get into that tomorrow night and the experiences that she has had. So hopefully it turns out to be a good show because tomorrow night I'll fill you in on what happened the last time we had her on. was not a pleasant experience whatsoever. So we're going to try it again. Hey, if you want to follow us on Twitter, you can do so at Space Out Radio. You can give our Facebook page a like, Space Out Radio Show. You can also ask to join our private Space Out Radio group, as well as Podcast Central. On Instagram, you can follow me at Dave Scott, S-O-R. And, of course, our website is spaceoutradio.com. You'll have a new look probably on Monday. It's looking good behind the scenes, I can tell you that. New logo, new attitude. Awesome. I will talk to you in exactly 22 hours from now. Misha Johnson, tomorrow night. I hope once again all of you can tune on in. Thank you to everybody in Space Out Radio Room, Paranormal Into the Night, and Paranormal Forum for supporting this show. And on that note, I'm going to go work on some Spreaker stuff. Got to get over there. We'll talk to you soon. Good night.